Okay, so World Wide Web is the first topic. How this issue is started? Okay, so uh, the the one if you go to the page of uh, World Wide Web, okay, you will see uh, the the influences. Okay, what I call the page of World Wide Web. Um, you can you can see uh, the history of World Wide Web in several places. One is the official w, W3C website, which is now the the main organization which uh, maintains the standards and so on and so forth. And uh, Tim Berners Lee, which is the inventor of the web, is the head. Okay, so one of the influences of the web is this paper, which is was written in uh, 45 by um, Vannevar Bush, which is a, a classic and highly important paper. In this epoch, Vannevar Bush wrote this, As We May Think. Okay? And this influenced Tim Berners-Lee in the following sense. Uh, uh, Vannevar Bush tells, okay, we don't think, we don't think linearly. Okay? We don't think uh, as, for example, a movie or something that is linear. We think linking information, connecting things. Okay? And if we think in this way, we must design, we must think something in which we can organize the information in the same way we think. Okay? Linking things. And then he uh, imagined in this uh, paper a kind of device he called Memex okay and this Memex is a kind of machine with a, a lot of things which uh, you have for example um, uh, macro, microfish I don't know if you know uh, microfilm I don't know if you, 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 you saw that because now it's almost something that's in the past but uh, you, you take pictures with microfilm of things. And he imagined these micro uh, fishes of film um, linked. So you, you, you may have links between documents in these microfilms. Okay? In such a way that you can go down and up. So it's a kind of uh, first idea of what will be uh, the hypertext that I will talk uh, further. Okay, so in fact, it's better talk about hypertext before. What's the? Where is the hypertext? Why? Ah, here. Sorry. So hypertext is the idea that uh, the the name hypertext uh, was coined in '65 by Ted Nelson. Okay, and it, it's it's a kind of materialization of this idea in which we have text documents and we have links we have things in the document that links this document with other documents and so on and so forth so the idea of hypertext and several research and several tools in hypertext were designed before the web much 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 earlier of the web so the idea of hypertext was developing and developing and developing Another thing is the GML. The GML is a kind of language designed by IBM, okay, generalized markup language, uh, uh, which in, in started the idea of tags of markup. So the GML started this idea. Okay, we have texts and we can put on these documents markups, okay. And it was the predecessor of the standard generalized markup language, which we will talk uh, further. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, April text. So and the history of the web. The web was the World Wide Web was developed by Tim Berners Lee in '89. Okay. He was employee of CERN. 
I don't know if you know the lab CERN, okay, in Europe. So it's an important lab in Switzerland, right? And and it's important lab. And he developed this concept of World Wide Web. And he further uh, de defined three basic technologies, which are the first basis of World Wide Web. So people think that Internet and World Wide Web is the same thing, but they are not the same thing. Do you know the difference? Who doesn't know the difference of Internet and WWW or web? Everybody knows the difference? Okay, so the basic idea is the web runs on top of the internet. So internet is much more than web. Okay? And the web runs on top of it. And it is based on in the beginning was based on three important things. First, a protocol, HTTP. This was really highly important because on the web you have protocols to to uh, transfer things, right? So in that epoch we have, for example, the protocols to for mails, okay, a mail. So you have the POP three, you have the SMTP for emails, okay. You have protocols for, to transfer files like FTP, okay. And you have a several protocols in this epoch. And Tim Berlin designed the HTTP, which is a specific protocol for the web. Okay. Second, it defined the, the concept of URI, which is highly important for, to, to our course. So uh, I, will, I take some time to explain it because there are people that doesn't understand exactly what is this concept. Okay. And third. The HTML, which is the hypertext markup language. So you see that hi hypertext markup language put together two ideas, markup and hypertext. So it puts together in an elegant way and it was highly successful in this epoch. So let's start talking about the URI, okay? Which is something that was designed together with the uh, web. So the basic idea is we need a unique identification for every resource on the web. So you may imagine that before that we use numbers, which is the IP address. Okay, use just numbers. And then Tim Berners Lee uh, defined this idea of okay, we can use now names. To define the location of something. And we must have something to resolve that, to transform that. Okay? So, but the URI is subdivided in two specifications URL and URN. Okay? Uh, I have some videos on the YouTube, unfortunately in Portuguese, not in English, uh, 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 explaining uh, this concept if you wish. Okay, and the URL is the thing that you usually put on the browser. Okay, it it defines a physical location. It's related to a physical location. It means that each URL is related to a physical location on the web. Okay, and there is the URN, which is something. That is unique on the web, but is not directly related to some physical location. Okay? So you need something we call resolver. What is a resolver? It's some kind of engine which transforms your address in some IP address or something like that. Do this kind of transformation or transforms it in some kind of uh, uh, URL. Okay, the the rules to build URI, uh, e uh, URN, are different from the rules to build URLs. Okay, the rules to build URN uh, is defined by uh, some organizations. So, for example, I will show you by example. Okay, so you may imagine this specific URI here. Oh, 
let me get here it's it's a bit lazy today I don't know what's happening but I think it doesn't want to work Hmm. Yeah. Or is a bit slow. Okay. So uh, consider. Uh, yeah, today it's really, really, really slow. I don't know what's happening. Let me check here. Happening. Let me try to stop the thing. I don't know how to stop the thing. I don't know if this pause here. I'll try that because that looks okay. I try now. So this is yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think it's yeah. Yeah, it doesn't work today for some strange reason. Yeah, the thing is, it doesn't. Uh, the other antivirus has much better options. It can be just stop updating and stop doing stupid things while I'm working, but this one is. I don't know. Let me try to see if it works. No, it will. Huh? What? No, no, esse aqui é o que eu uso sempre para gravar, mas eu quero que ele pare de fazer isso aqui. Não que ele pare de proteger a máquina, mas ela, essa porcaria não tem um botão. Ó. Start scanning. Stop skin. Stop updates. I'm going to try to put it Okay. Let's see now if it works. It's not possible to use it today. So this first part, yeah, it's not possible to use it today. The machine is too slow. It's, it's it wants to. I don't know what's happening, but This is the way to produce the best antivirus ever. You cannot work with your machine, so your machine will not get any virus because it's you cannot use it. So it's the best antivirus ever. It impedes you to use your machine.
Oh God. Okay. I I. It's not possible to use it. It's, okay. So the basic idea here is the UI is divided in several parts. Okay. So for example, this first part here, URN. This part of URN. Okay, I will point on the board is better. So the first part, URN, defines that this is an URN. Okay. The second part, OGC, is from uh, this uh, organization, OGC. So all, uh, all uh, URNs from OGC it starts from OGC. Okay. Then DEF is something that tells, is the number one here, tells that this is an uh, OGC definition. And in the two, UOM means that is a unit of measure. And then uh, it tells that this is a Celsius temperature. So the, 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 this example is to show you that URN is based in rules of how you build it. It's not based on location. Okay? And then you need a resolver to translate uh, the URN to, a, uh, to, a, to some uh, address on the web. And there is the third concept, which is the persistent URL. Okay, the persistent URL is a kind of URL uh, in which you you combine the concept of uh, uh, URN in the sense that it's not the is not the it, do, it doesn't define the physical location, but uh, it uses the the URL rules in the sense that you have a prefix. A prefix of uh, an address, and this address in the prefix, now it's working. Uh, the address on the prefix is the address of the resolver. So, for example, uh, purl.org is the address of a resolver, okay, on the web. And in this resolver, you can create an account, and you can uh, create your own uh, UR and, uh, uh, PURL. You can create your, your own addresses. Okay? And the idea here is it works as a resolver. So, you, for example, I have a PURL with my name. Okay? So, for example, if you go here and you type on the, on the browser, for example, if you type here, if it's possible, right? <laughs> Because it's, yeah, it's almost impossible. It's really, really slow. Okay. So, if you type here, uh, the URL dot R, which is the address, and then my name, you see, it's not a physical location, it's my name. Okay, and put enter here. Okay, what will happen? It will go to not found. <laughs> okay, I think I don't need I don't need to put the, the slash on the end here. Without the slash on the end, same thing. Mm. Let me see. I think it's, it's still the old thing. I think I need to put net here. Is it still the the old address? No. Hmm. This is strange. Oh. Ah. Okay. I think it is without without the dot. Is everything together? Let's try. Ah. Oh, I forgot the A. Just a minute. Andre. Okay. Let's. Uh, without the dot. Now something is happening. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. So it redirects this this ad, this PURL, it redirects to my page, for example. Okay? So, and where I do that, I go to the this resolver, PURL, I go there and I do the connections. Okay? And so this Andres Santanke PURL is perma permanent. 
because I can change organizations, I can change places, and I just need just to redirect it. Okay? So this is important. Uh, I will show you that it's highly important when we talk about semantic web. On the semantic web, it's not a good idea to change the address of the things when you, you change locations and so on and so forth. So I, we use a lot this thing. Okay? Okay. So this is the concept. Are you following the ideas? Everybody is understanding? Okay. So let's go ahead. So the URI can address an, a document, an entire document. So for example, this one will address the entire document. Okay. So it will be a reference to a resource or can be in, in the case of HTML, the HTML, it will be, it can be a reference to an anchor inside a document. This is, this is not the wrong, ex the right example because this is XML. This is different. I'll talk about XML afterwards. Okay, so, uh, so, what's HTML? HTML means Hypertext Markup Language. Okay? It's a publishing language. And it's written in SGML. You remember that I talked about SGML, which is this uh, standard generalized markup language. Okay? So the basic idea is the following. This is in, in, important, this is important, this, but uh, SGML, this one here, is something we call meta language. Which, what is a meta language? Is a language to produce languages. Is a language to specify languages. Okay? Uh, mainly markup languages. Okay? And uh, they designed this SGML because they need something uh, in which people can design their own languages to write structured documents. So you may imagine, for example, the uh, you have some uh, something like uh, uh, I don't know how to tell porta avião in English. Someone knows porta avião. Okay. So, huh? Carrier or something like that. So you may imagine that you want to write the manuals for the entire, how to use the entire port of view, okay? In such a way that when you receive a new one in the package, okay, you, you open the package and, you, oh, this is a new port of view, okay, okay. How can I use it? Well, which, which button are you press in the beginning to start the things, okay? So, you may imagine how complex is one of these boats, okay? And if you, if you try to, 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 to print the manuals of these things, you take much more space than the entire port of view. Okay? This is, this is true. The, the, the manuals of a port of view is much more, you get much more space than the port of view itself. Okay? So, when they started to do these things, they started to design a language to, to write these documents in digital form. So, SGML, okay, is from the 80s. And they want to do to use this language to produce these kinds of digital documents in this two way. And Tim Bernley used it to design HTML. Okay? Okay. Afterwards I will talk about XML, which is something else. Okay? But not today. Okay, so uh, uh, now we are in the version we call HTML5, which is much more a buzzword in the sense that what is HTML5? The last complete specification of HTML is HTML4. Okay, HTML4 is the last complete specification. Okay, after the HTML4, what happened? The HTML became so big, okay, and so many people are involved. In the designing new things and new new parts of it, 
that first it became much more modularized in the sense that you have specifications of several parts of the language okay but the second thing is people cannot wait anymore the final specification of w3c to start use it using it okay people cannot wait anymore so what happened this organization here what uh, w, wg okay this organization is started a living standard which is recognized by w3c what is a living standard they publish uh, partial standards okay of uh, the while the language is evolving they start publishing the partial standards okay and several uh, browsers started to implement it so now you can use several things for HTML5 even though you don't have the final big specification form from W3C okay so the idea is and even W3C recognize this organization so it, now the idea is we will not wait several years for a new specification anymore we will start uh, uh, evolving it and using it as as soon as they release new things okay so since it's a markup language what's the concept of a markup language the basic idea is a markup language use markup to add information to documents so this is the basic idea and here we have two important things first is the idea of document and the idea of document I will show you that something that in many cases is not so uh, people are not aware of the importance of document as a model okay document is a model and the web or the HTML follows the document model and I will tell, show you that the document model is intrinsically a hierarchical model okay and this influences all the specifications of the web which is different from many other models I will, I will show you okay so for example consider you have this uh, this statement Horacio wrote the book Life of Dinosaurs okay and now you want to add information on the content so you have the content you don't want to interfere in the content you have just to add a kind of layer on top of it with new information okay so now you want to tag it to mark up it okay and the idea here is if we want to devise what is the content and what is the markup we need to have a special symbols for the markup so we know this is content this is markup okay okay so then we have the classic symbols okay of markup in HTML and we open and close each markup okay I don't know everybody is um, knows HTML who doesn't know HTML everybody knows okay the basics so the basic idea is that you know you open a markup you put the content you close a markup okay so for example in this case uh, by using markup I can tell that this first part here is outer and this second part here is action okay and the special symbols tells me it's not the content it's something on top of the content so for this reason people talk about metadata okay so the word metadata appears here and I will talk to you about metadata further we will talk we will have just a, a class about metadata the thing is 
What's metadata? Is data about data. Okay? So, you may imagine that the content, which is the statement, is data. Okay? And the tags are metadata. And, and we can separate them. I can split them. I can see them uh, in separate things. Because I am using these special characters, which are the tags. This is the concept of markup. Okay? But there is also the notion of document. And the notion of document enforces me to have a hierarchical structure with one root, which is the document. Okay? So this is the idea of I cannot just get the content and put markups on it, just that. But I need, for example, a markup that comprises all the things which is the root of the thing, which we will call document. And it is hierarchical, okay? It produces an hierarchical structure. And this is uh, mandatory in HTML and will be mandatory in XML also, okay? And as, as I will show you, this kind of organization has several advantages. And also several disadvantages. Okay, so we will uh, challenge it in the future. We will show limitations and problems of doing this way. Okay, this is good for humans. And when you want to kind of relate the the way you organize information is the way you do things in the real world. Okay, but it's not always a good solution. So. Uh, sorry, this part is in Portuguese, but it's the same thing, and, and, and you have this, uh, this is the model behind that document, is an hierarchy, is a tree, okay? But uh, HTML has more things, it has predefined markup, and what I call predefined markup and I show you that this is different from the, 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 the next language, which will be XML, okay? Predefined markup means you predefine some markups and the, the role they play in the document, okay? So, for example, you have a markup to tell that this is a paragraph, for example, okay? To tell that this is an image, this is a, an item, this is a hair, header. This is what we call predefined markup. Okay? The roles are predefined. Okay. See. Yeah, this is this is a good question. So Celso is asking about the semantics, right? So the thing is you you you, you talk about the 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 form, the the presentation and so on and so forth, but but the machine is not aware what is that, right? What's what is these things, right? And the semantics is a problem that we will go uh, progressing. Today we will talk about, if you have time, about microformats, and I will show you the first step towards semantics. Okay, but then we will follow the the the, the road towards semantics, talking about XML and so on, and go and forth and forth. So, so the basic idea is here we have a poor semantics. Okay, we always have semantics, but we have a poor semantics. The machine is just showing the information for you, and you are the guy 
who you understand the semantics based on the visual presentation, so you are an intelligent guy. So in some sense, HTML was designed for intelligent reader, okay, which is people, not for machines, okay. And this is the some, something that afterwards the, they tried to evolve. First in XML, but then much better in RDF or WL, things that we will further study. Okay? But here we will talk about this first thing, which is I will try, even though I don't think, uh, I, I will not, uh, no, I will not try to open the. I will not try to open the Eclipse. I'm thinking about open the Eclipse, but uh, it's a crazy thing, right? Okay, you agree with me, right? Yeah, it's crazy. I will not try that. So I I will use it, the web maker. Let me see if. Oh, I think it's webmaker.org. Let me see. This is the tool that I asked you to produce a page last time. Okay? Let me see. Uh, so, let's do the following. I will enter here in my, in my page. It's hard to work uh, with not much space. Let me try to remove these things. No, it's not that. Okay. So, uh, if you go teaching here, new students, pay attention. And you go to the web and semantic web, which is our course here. Okay. Everything is in English here. So, you, you can be... Okay. So here you find a link. Oh God. Okay. Moodle access. Okay. If you go to this link, it will open the environment of this discipline. Okay. And I need to add you so you have access to this guy here. Oh, okay. Now it goes. And in this Moodle environment, um, okay. Oh, I want to know my secret password, right? Uh, me too. I don't remember. I think it's this one. Uh, and that. And now, cross your fingers. So, uh, if you are uh, special students, I don't know if you already have an RA. Do you have a number? RA, we call. You need that to access here. But we, we will talk about that. So, there is this first homework. Okay. And the second homework here. And um, let's do the following. Let's try here now. Uh, what's the thing? Okay. What I ask is people to update their profiles, okay, putting the, the address, so let's see here, uh, users, and now we will see the students that are already subscribed, okay, so Walter is here, Walter, so let's see Walter, so Walter now I think if I click here, I will open the profile of Walter. And the thing that I ask it is to update the profile. You see, there is the picture, everything, and then here, probably in some place here. Ah. Oh God. I don't know. Did you put the, the address of the page here? Hmm? 
let me see C profile is this one hmm. I don't know let me check another student to see let's see self okay Wow, I'm doing okay. I don't know what's happening. Uh, let me see if I need to click on the no. Ah, probably I need to enter here. No, right? Let me see to see your ah, there is a profile. No. Yeah. Really strange. I don't know what's happening. This is strange because in this way I cannot see your page. Yeah, something is wrong here. Let me see. Is it possible that I see just my address? Doesn't make sense, right? No. So I'm in the wrong place, probably. Wrong place. The only explanation. Yes, I am in the wrong place. Let me see if there are another place to find. This is really strange. I don't see even my my link. Let me see if it has something here that if I click on the name same thing. Yeah. Hmm. Really strange. Is it possible that it puts no? Oh, let me see if I put as a if I change my role. Let me enter as a student. I will appear here as a student to see if it shows me. Okay. Ah, oh, God. Okay, let me see if I can see. Here. Oh. Hmm. Let me see here if it appears something on the here. Wow. 
Yeah. I really don't know. Let me see if I do that. Yeah. I really don't know what's happening. It doesn't appear the address. Okay. Okay. I I I need to. Now I I I look at what's happening next class. I uh, we will go in this page. Okay. Uh, let me go. Oh, okay. Let me close. A bunch of things here. Okay. So if you go to this web maker, you can do your login here. Okay. And after some time, you to appear here something so you can use, for example, if you wish your Google account or something like that to do your login. Okay. Okay, so I'll do my login here. This is the tool I advise you to use if you, you um, produce your page. And I use now to talk about some examples of HTML. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Can you log? Yeah. I don't know what's happening, but uh, we can see things. The thing afterwards, but now the idea is to use one thing we call Tumblr. Let me see how I okay. Okay, so uh, it does it disappears when what's the idea here? Okay, ferramentas. Okay, and uh, this is the two symbol. Okay, so this symbol is something that we can use to exploit the first ideas of web. Okay. Uh, okay, so this symbol here uh, it shows you uh, in one side. Uh, the HTML code, and in the other side, it shows you the 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 result. Okay, so this is the hierarchical hierarchical structure that I told you. Okay, HTML is the root, and then there is head. Okay, and the body. And if you don't like the head here now, you can just remove it. Okay, I do that now, and so for example here you can have okay the dinosaur jump it in the llama is move move team something like that okay so if you want to put that this is bold you just put the tag bold and bold okay but the thing is, this doesn't have too much command, right? And this is the thing we are complaining, or Celso is complaining. Oh, there is no much semantics. Okay, so let's follow. Before we talk about semantics, there is the attributes. I, I don't know if you know the attributes. The attributes is things 
that you can put inside the tag that you add some extra uh, parameters in your tag. So, for example, here the outer we can have date that uh, he born or uh, the some kind of uh, uh, identification. You have also the notion of empty tags, which is the tag plus a, 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 a slash. Okay, but this is this was introduced by XML. It's not original of HTML. Okay, but uh, they tried to put them together in a specification they call XHTML. It doesn't. Uh, it didn't work uh, well. But now uh, the last versions of HTML can afford uh, empty tags, and you can use anchors. What is this thing? You can do a link for a place inside a document. We call anchor. Okay. If you don't, you, if you are not used it with an anchor, I can show you. Okay. So when you produce this kind of uh, address here. And you put this symbol and some kind of name here. It's pointing to an anchor inside the document with whose uh, which ID is this one. Okay. Okay. So this is the thing. And in the HTML5, they started to think web as a platform. What it means? It means that uh, now web is not just uh, the web is some place where you can uh, think of everything. So, for example, you may think about multimedia, okay, uh, storage, uh, device assets, and so on and so forth. So, instead of just thinking, this is a thing to produce pages. They are considering that web now is something bigger, is something as a platform. We will have uh, a specific uh, class about web as a platform. For now on, we will just uh, talk a bit. But there is the cascade, cascade style sheet. The cascade style sheet is something that was invented to add styles to web in web documents, but and then we come to your question. It also helps to put more semantics in the page. Okay? And how Cascade Stale Sheet helps on doing that? Okay, first, it's just for it's something for a style. Okay? Good. Uh, just a, uh, a remark the HTML5 is evolving together what we call Cascade Style Sheet 3, which is the version level 3 of Cascade Style Sheet. Uh, now it's a modularized specification and models evolve independently. Okay? It's also a living standard like HTML5. Okay? So the, the important thing in Cascade, Cascade style, sheet, style Sheet is the separation between content and the style. And this is highly important when we talk about the web. And why? So considering the following thing. You have something we call the content. Okay? Which is the thing that you want to show, you want to express. Okay? So the content is, for example, your HTML. Okay. And this content, in this content, I will try as far as I can to define the semantics of the elements and not the presentation. Why? Because I will have a second layer I call style. And this second layer has everything about the style of the content. So it has the information of how I will present and organize the content. And so the presentation will be the result of the content plus the style. And if you think in the web standards, the HTML will be responsible for the content. The CSS will be responsible for the style. 
and the and then they both together will result in the presentation and what links the things what links the content to the style is the semantics so the basic idea is I will define the semantics of elements in my content and then the style will tell how these guys will be presented or will be uh, treated on the re final result. So let me show you something, some example. Okay? Consider I want to present this text here. Okay? in which I want to split the content from the, sem from the presentation. If I do that in pure HTML, I will put both together. But then, for example, uh, what is inside, besides the content, what we will have? We will have fonts, size and colors. Okay? So we must define that. Uh, but then, if I fix the style, I will have a problem uh, when, for example, we have different devices. Okay, you see that uh, this mobile is a bit uh, old. Okay, okay. But if you may, may imagine that I want to read this page in a mobile device, okay, the size and the font and the colors that I fix it uh, may be uh, not uh, adequate okay too, too big or too color too much colors and so on and so forth another problem is the contrast for example so in some cases for example when I print it or something like that uh, it can produces problems okay and for example, for some kind of readers, the colors are not adequate. So, okay. So, consider that this is the original text. Let me see what's happening here. Yeah, this stupid guy wants to... Oh, God. I cannot... You see that? You see that? This is the best invention of Microsoft. I put here, so who is... See my class, we will see what I will suffer now. It's impossible. It's impossible. It will restart my machine and I cannot do anything about that. And why? Because I'm not the administrator of this thing. So, since I'm not the administrator, I cannot uh, postpone. And I don't know if there is something that I can do. I don't think so. Let me see. Is not possible? Let me try the follow. I will stop the recording. <laughs>